front headlamp of a Nissan GTR. This is the one image that I carry around with me everywhere I go in life. It's on my phone, it's on my laptop. I've got a little picture of it next to my bed, next to the missus of course. It gets me through all the dark times in life, knowing that when I get this GTR one day, I will have made it in life and I'm going to retire to Wales. So walking through the car park of Motor Talks HQ this morning, I saw it. The same picture that I have on my phone of my GTR that I'm going to own one day. But it's not a GTR, it's a Suzuki Swift Sport. The streamlined bonnet adds to the Swift Sport's, well, sporty name, as does the rear spoiler and twin exhausts. Suzuki have been fairly sensible with the wheels. The 17-inch alloys aren't too big and look appropriate with the body. How dare I mention Nissan GTR and Suzuki Swift Sport in the same sentence? I know, I'm sorry. But I think it's just evidence of how good this car looks from the outside. It looks sporty, it's young, it's fresh, it's all good. The same, I don't think, can be said about the interior of this car. It just feels a little bit... It's a cheap car. It's very cheap. It's very well priced in its segment. But the build quality just isn't quite as good as some of its rivals. But it's not all bad. We've got a lot of gear in here. We've got Bluetooth with steering wheel mounted controls that's all good even though my steering wheel is upside down i've got cruise control great some volume mounts for the radio good cd player air conditioning a 12 volt adapter ipod connectivity a cup holder for cups another cup holder for bottles gears seats which are very comfortable very sporty bucket seats nice with red stitching and this carbon fiber-esque pattern that makes you go dizzy if you stare at it too long but it's all good it even says sport on the seat and it's also got a five star euro ncap safety rating so it's safe that's great there's also space in the back for a couple of dwarves and there's a boot so let me show you the boot Sportier, more streamlined and generally quite attractive inside and out. We give its appeal category three and a half stars. Now before we do crack the boot open, it's worth just highlighting some of the trim detail that's on the back of the car. I love it and I think it's one of the reasons this car looks so sporting. Now when you do open the boot, there's 211 litres of storage space, but there is a very high lip, very high lip indeed, so it does make getting access to this car a little bit difficult especially with a lot of bags now the seats again they don't split it's not a 60 40 split it's just a case of push those buttons and, and down they go but it does extend the storage space to over 500 liters of storage there's a few negatives but there's a few positives so as we show you some nice shots of the car looking good on the road i'm going to clamber into the back to show you just how much space there is there as with most three-door hatches, getting into the rear can be an unglamorous affair for most and that's something to consider, especially if you're going to use it as a small family car. Now, I may joke about the amount of space that's available in the back of the Swift, but if I'm honest, it's not too bad. There's not a great deal of legroom, but the headroom is fair and it's quite comfortable. There's plenty of shoulder room. There's only space for two people in the back here. There's only two sets of seat belts, but there's little things like cubby holes down here and the seats are quite comfortable, so it's not too bad. Therefore, for practicality, we award the car three out of the five stars. So when you first get into the car, it's keyless entry, so you don't need to fumble about in your pocket for the keys. And then also, it's got a nice little funky button that you push to start the car. So, I feel sporty to begin with. So we're told that this car's got a top speed of 121 miles an hour and a 0 to 62 time of just under 9 seconds. However, theory and reality are two very different things and I'd have to suggest in this particular instance that the Swift looks better on paper than how it drives. Not bad on performance, but more suited to first-time buyers or the more reserved, slower driver, as it lacks a little bit of oomph. So we award its performance category 4 out of the 5 stars. 
This vehicle's the six-speed transmission and it returns around 44 miles per gallon. The six-speed manual gearbox is direct and the little Suzuki is a joy to drive. Therefore, we give it ride in handling category four and a half stars. Starting at £13,749, the Suzuki Swift Sport is reasonably priced, and as it is fairly economical, it won't cost too much in the long run. Its looks will only get it so far, and if you're an enthusiastic driver, then it might be best to opt for, say, the Peugeot 208. It's a good little car, though, so for its ownership category, we give it four stars. An attractive little sporty warm hatch. The Suzuki Swift Sport is a great little motor and will be popular with all buyers, although not quite matching up to its competitors in some areas. It's reliable and has plenty going for it, so overall we give this car four stars. If you've got any thoughts on this car then leave them in the comments box below. Alternatively follow me on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel.